Welcome to the Beyond the Basics guide for the 6D. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this instructional guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. Feel free to navigate to any specific chapter you wish to view at any time during the video. Please note that this guide does not cover many of the more basic features and functions of the 6D, as those topics are discussed at length in our original guide. Rather, this guide will help you move forward with your knowledge of your camera to help you take the best pictures possible. The 6D has an impressive 20 megapixel full frame image sensor, built in Wi Fi and GPS, a large 3 inch LCD, an 11 point autofocus system, and many other great features and functions that we'll discuss in this guide. Let's get started. is the depth of field preview button which has 10 different options. The first and default option is depth of field preview which will allow you to check the depth of field for a picture before it's taken. The next option is AF stop which will allow you to press the button to stop the camera from autofocusing. 
Again, this is useful if you want to lock focus in the camera's AI servo focus mode. The AEFE lock option will allow you to press the depth of field preview button to lock the exposure and flash exposure settings. The next option, One Shot AI Servo, will allow you to press and hold the depth of field preview button to temporarily switch between the One Shot and AI Servo focus modes. This is useful for times when you're photographing a subject that frequently starts and stops moving. The next option, IS Start, will allow you to press the depth of field preview button to activate the image stabilization that is available on certain lenses. Note that this function will work only if the stabilizer switch on the lens barrel is set to on. The next option for the depth of field preview button is Viewfinder Electronic Level, which will display an electronic level using the camera's AF points in the viewfinder when the button is pressed. The next option for customizing the depth of field preview button is AE Lock Hold. When selected, AE Lock Hold will lock the exposure setting when the button is pressed, and the exposure setting will remain locked until the button is pressed again. Next, there is AE Lock, which will allow you to press and hold the depth of field preview button to lock the exposure. The FE Lock option will allow you to lock the flash exposure when an optional flash is used. The next button that can be customized is the Lens AF Stop button, which is available on certain Canon lenses. For this button, there are eight different options. The first and default option is AF Stop, which will allow you to stop the camera from autofocusing. The next option is Metering and AF Start, which will allow you to press the button to activate the exposure meter and autofocus. Next, there is AEFE Lock, which will allow you to press the button to lock the exposure and flash exposure setting. Next, there is One Shot AI Servo, which will allow you to toggle between the camera's One Shot and AI Servo focus modes. The next option is the IS Start, which will allow you to activate the image stabilization feature of the lens when the button is pressed. Next, there is AE Lock Hold. With this option, the exposure setting will be locked when the button is pressed and will remain locked until the button is pressed again. Next, there is AE Lock, which will lock the exposure only while the button is pressed. Last, there is FE Lock, which will lock the flash exposure setting. The next button that can be customized is the Set button. The first and default option for the Set button is Off, which means that the button is disabled in the camera shooting modes. The next option is Image Quality. When selected, image quality will allow you to press the set button to instantly access the camera's image quality settings. The next option is picture style, which will allow you to press the set button to quickly access the picture style settings. The next option, menu display, will bring up the menu system when the set button is pressed. The next option for customizing the set button is ISO speed. When this option is selected, you can press and hold the set button while rotating the main dial is AF Point Direct Selection, which will allow you to select the camera's AF point manually without pressing the AF Point Selection button. On the 6D, you can also customize the function of the Info button. To do this, we'll need to enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the third setup menu. First, we'll look at the options for the Info button. 
With this option, you can choose what displays are shown each time the info button is pressed. You can select or deselect camera settings, electronic level, and shooting functions by pressing set. When you've made your selections, highlight OK and press set again. Bracketing is a technique that allows photographers to take several versions of the same photo, but with different settings. When exposure is bracketed using three images, one of the photos will be properly exposed, one will be slightly overexposed, and one will be slightly underexposed. Then you will have the ability to choose the best image of the three, or use photo editing software to combine the three shots, giving the image a broad range of highlights and shadows that are all properly exposed. This technique is often called HDR, or High Dynamic Range. Professional photographers have used bracketing since the days of film to ensure good exposure on important shots. With the 6D, bracketing is available for exposure and white balance. Let's first look at how to configure the camera for exposure bracketing. The first thing you'll need to do is set the drive mode. When you're using the continuous drive mode, you'll press and hold the shutter button to record the number of frames you'd like. For the other drive modes, one shot will be taken each time the shutter button is pressed. We'll choose continuous shooting drive mode using the quick control screen. Simply press the quick control button and use the multi-controller to navigate to the drive mode setting. Here you can rotate the quick control dial to make your selection. The next step to configure the camera for exposure bracketing is to select what type of bracketing you'd like from the menu system. To do this, navigate to the third shooting menu and select Exposure Compensation AEB, or Auto Exposure Bracketing. You can select the bracketing increment or the amount of variation you'd like between the shots by rotating the main dial. You can choose a very small bracketing increment, or if you'd like to see more variation between your shots, you can choose a larger increment. Press Set to confirm your selection. The larger the number, the more variation in exposure there will be. If you select a smaller increment, like 0.3, the images will have less variation. Now all we need to do is take a few pictures. As always, press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. Since we're in the continuous drive mode, we'll hold the shutter button down to record the bracketed images. The first shot will have the standard exposure setting. The next one will be underexposed and the last shot will be overexposed. Just like we can bracket the exposure, we can also bracket the white balance. Doing this will allow us greater control over the color of images, particularly in tricky lighting situations. We'll have best results if an appropriate white balance setting has been selected or if a custom white balance has been taken. To bracket white balance, enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the third shooting menu. Here select white balance shift bracket. Now you can rotate the quick control dial to select the color variation you'd like the camera to use for the bracketed shots. If you rotate the quick control dial to the left, the green and magenta will be bracketed. And if you rotate the quick control dial to the right, the blue and amber colors will be bracketed. In the bracket box on the right side of the screen, you can see the amount of bracketing that will be applied. You can rotate the quick control dial to select the amount of variation you'd like between the bracketed shots. Choosing one will give the image a small amount of variation, and choosing three will give the image a greater amount of variation. When white balance is bracketed, only one picture needs to be taken, and the camera will automatically generate the bracketed copies of the image. As discussed, you can choose to have either the green magenta tones bracketed, or you can choose to have the blue amber tones bracketed. If you select the green magenta tones, the first shot will have a standard setting, the second will have increased magenta tones, and the last shot will have increased green tones. If you choose to have the blue amber tones bracketed, the first shot will have the standard white balance setting, the second shot will have increased blue tones, and the last shot will have increased amber tones. The 6D has a feature for creating multiple exposures as well as a feature for HDR photography. These features are great for creative and artistic shots. First, we'll discuss the multiple exposure function on your camera. 
In film and digital photography alike, a multiple exposure is created when the film or image sensor is exposed two or more times to two or more different images. The final image has the additional image or images superimposed over the first. This photography technique is useful for creating artistic effect and is most commonly used when photographing fireworks, lightning, or superimposing a bright moon in a daytime scene. Let's walk through how to set up your 6D to shoot a multiple exposure image. Enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the fourth shooting menu. Here select multiple exposure. For the first setting you can choose disable or enable. We'll want to select enable. The next option, multiple exposure control, is where you can choose how you'd like the camera to calculate the exposure for each of the shots. If you select additive, the exposure of each individual image will be added cumulatively. This is a good option to select if you're using a technique called masking, where one part of the lens is covered for the first shot and the opposite part of the lens is covered for the second shot. If you're not using the masking technique with the additive setting, you'll want to set a negative exposure compensation to ensure a properly exposed final image. The average option will automatically set the exposure values between the shots to ensure a properly exposed final image. The next option that we'll need to select is the number of exposures. With the 6D, you can choose from between two and nine exposures to be combined to make the final image. The next setting in the multiple exposure menu is continue multiple exposure. With this setting, you can choose to take just one multiple exposure image and then return to normal shooting, or you can choose to shoot multiple exposure images continuously until multiple exposure shooting is canceled by selecting disable for the first option in the multiple exposure menu. Below the multiple exposure settings, there is an option to select image for multiple exposure. This is the option that you would use to select your base image if you were using the masking technique. After you have made your selections in the multiple exposure menu, simply take the number of shots that you select for number of exposures and the camera will combine them to create the final multiple exposure image. Another useful feature of the 6D is the HDR mode which will allow you to create stunning HDR images directly in camera. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique that's used in photography to create captivating photos of dramatically lit subjects. The HDR effect is created when three differently exposed images are combined to create a single photo that shows a super realistic range of shadow and highlights. To capture an HDR photo, enter the fourth shooting menu and select HDR mode. Here you will see several options. First, there is the dynamic range setting, which will determine the level of variation in exposure between the shots that will be combined to make the final image. You can choose auto, one, two, or three exposure steps. Choosing one will combine three images with slight variation in exposure, and choosing three will combine images with more dramatic differences in exposure. The next setting you'll need to select in the HDR options is Continuous HDR. You can choose to have only one shot be HDR or you can choose to have every shot be HDR. Next there is Auto Image Align, which will automatically align the three images that will be combined to create the final HDR image. If you're using a tripod, you'll want to set this to Disable. If you're hand holding the camera, you'll want to choose Enable. When you're finished making your selection, simply take the picture as you normally would. The camera will take three shots at high speed and combine them to create the HDR image. In addition to capturing impressive high resolution still images, the 6D can record full HD movies. Note that because the basic features of the camera's movie mode were covered in detail in QuickPro's original guide for the 6D, we'll primarily be looking at more in-depth features and functions of the movie mode. Let's first take a look at the options that are available in the movie shooting menus. To view the movie shooting menus, first make sure that the Live View Movie Shooting switch is set to Movie. Then press the Menu button. The first option in the first movie shooting menu is the AF method for movie shooting. Next, there is silent live view shooting with two modes to choose from. In mode one, shooting is quieter than in normal live view. 
In mode two, you can press and hold the shutter button after the photo has been taken to further minimize sound. When you release the shutter button to the halfway position, normal picture taking will resume. The next item in the first movie shooting menu is metering timer. With this option, you can change how long the exposure setting or auto exposure lock time is displayed. The second movie shooting menu begins with grid display, which will allow you to choose the grid that you would like displayed on the LCD monitor during movie shooting. First, there is the 3x3 grid. This option will display a rule of third style grid on the live view and movie shooting screen. There is also a 6x4 grid. The 6x4 grid is especially helpful when you want to make sure that the image is not tilted. The last grid option is 3x3 plus diagonal. You can create striking compositions with this grid option when you place the subject at any intersection of the lines. Next, there is the movie recording size, where you can choose from a variety of movie recording sizes. We'll discuss more about movie recording sizes later in this chapter. Next, there is sound recording. To record sound in the movie mode, the 6D has a built-in microphone, which will record sound automatically by default. If you'd like to change the microphone sensitivity or turn off sound recording, you can do this through the camera's menu system. Enter the camera's second movie shooting tab and select sound recording. Here you can select auto, manual, or disable. If you select manual, you can adjust the recording levels to suit your needs. You can also choose whether or not you'd like the wind filter to be enabled. If you're shooting movies outdoors in windy conditions, enabling the filter will reduce the noise caused by wind. If there is no wind or you're shooting indoors, you'll want to disable the filter as the sound will be more natural than it would be if the filter were enabled. Next, there is the time code option, which will allow you to choose the way that you'd like the time code recorded with the movie file. We will discuss more about time code later in this chapter. The last menu item is video snapshot, which will allow you to configure the camera to create a video snapshot. Now let's take a moment to discuss movie recording size. Just as with still image shooting, it's important to select the resolution or movie recording size for your scenario. With the 6D, there are three different movie resolution options, each with several different frame rate and compression options. Let's discuss the movie recording size options now. When the live view movie switch is set to movie, the movie recording size options will be available in the camera's second movie shooting menu under Movie Recording Size. Choosing one of the four options on the left, 1920 by 1080, will allow you to capture full HD video. Use this when you want the highest resolution video the camera is capable of recording. The top two options on the right side of the screen are 1280 by 720. They are good options when you want to have a high quality video, but it doesn't need to be full HD. The bottom option on the right side of the screen is 640 by 480. This is a lower resolution setting that's good for when you know you only want to use the movie for emailing or posting online. Choosing 24 frames per second will closely imitate the look that you would get if you were using a film video camera. 30 frames per second is more like what you would see on television. 60 frames per second is good for recording fast action video. In addition to the movie recording size and frame rate, there are two different compression options on the 6D. IPB and all I. The IPB compression method will compress multiple frames at once for more efficient recording in smaller file sizes. The all I method will compress the frames one at a time for a movie file that is more suited for editing, but will also be a larger file. The purpose or use of the finished video will help you decide which recording size, frame rate, and compression method to use. Keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the larger the file sizes will be. As discussed earlier, when you're shooting movies, you can customize the way that you'd like to have the time code recorded. The time code is the way that a time reference is recorded with the movie, and it's used to synchronize the audio and the video. The way that the time code is recorded can be customized for your needs. Make sure that the live view movie switch is set to movie and enter the camera's menu system. Navigate to the second movie shooting menu and select time code. Here you'll see that there are five different menu items to customize. First, there is the count up option. 
For count up, you can choose from record run or free run. If record run is selected, the time code will only count up while you're actually shooting a movie. If free run is selected, the time code will count up regardless of whether you're shooting the movie or not. The next option in the time code menu is start time setting. For this option, you can choose from manual input setting, reset, or set to camera time. If you select manual input setting, you'll be able to set the hour, minute, and second freely. If you select reset, the time for both manual input setting and set to camera time will be reset. And if you select set to camera time, the hours, minutes, and seconds will be set to match the camera's internal clock. The next two menu items in the time code menu are movie recording count and movie playback count. For both of these options, you can choose to have either the recording time or the time code displayed on the LCD monitor. If recording time is selected, the time that has elapsed since the beginning of movie recording or playback will be displayed. If time code is selected, the time code will be displayed. The last menu item in the time code menu is drop frame. When enabled, the drop frame option will automatically correct the discrepancy in the time code that is caused when certain frame rates are used. With Canon's wide array of lenses and accessories, you'll be able to take amazing photos and further build your photography skills. Please note that using some third-party accessories, particularly flash units and multi-power packs, may cause damage to your camera and may void your Canon warranty. You'll want to check with your authorized Canon dealer or service representative for more information about using third-party accessories. With the wide variety of lenses in Canon's current lineup, it can seem overwhelming to know what lens or lenses will help you with the type of photography you're doing. One of the things you'll need to consider when you're shopping for a Canon lens for the 6D is whether the lens is EF or EFS. Canon EF lenses are fully compatible with the 6D and are indicated by an EF on the lens barrel. Canon EF lenses will allow you to use the entire area of the image sensor. Canon's EFS lenses are not compatible with the 6D and are indicated by an EFS on the lens barrel. There are also some Canon lenses in both of the EF and EFS formats that are referred to as L series lenses. These lenses are known for their stunning clarity and performance. These lenses are differentiated from the other lenses with a bold red ring around the barrel. Let's talk a little about lenses and apertures. When shopping for a lens, you'll notice that all lenses have a maximum aperture or f-stop. Smaller numbers like f1.4 and f2.8 are considered to be faster lenses because they allow a lot of light into the camera. If your lens has a range of apertures, note that the largest aperture can be used only at the widest focal length. This lens is an f4 lens, and this is how the aperture or aperture range is indicated on the lens barrel. The number or numbers following the 1 colon indicate the aperture or aperture range. The maximum aperture of the lens is important to keep in mind when you're shopping for a lens, especially if you're planning on doing photography in low light conditions, action or sports photography, or you're looking to create photos with a very shallow depth of field. After the maximum aperture of the lens, the next thing you'll need to consider is the focal length. Canon lenses are available in a wide range of focal lengths, each with its own benefits and uses. The focal length on a lens is the first series of numbers on a lens barrel and is measured in millimeters. This lens, for instance, is a 24 to 105 millimeter lens, or the focal lengths range from 24 millimeters to 105 millimeters. Lenses that have a range of focal lengths, like this 24 to 105, are zoom lenses. Zoom lenses have the ability to get closer or farther away from the subject without ever actually moving the camera. Lenses that have only one focal length, like a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, are called prime lenses. Prime lenses do not have zooming capability, but many professional photographers prefer them, particularly for portraits because of the great clarity they offer. With this understanding of focal lengths in millimeters, we can discuss some of the different ranges of focal lengths as well as the lens categories that different focal lengths fall into. Typically, lenses that are less than 50 millimeters are considered to be wide-angle lenses. 
So the 24 to 105 that we just talked about could fall into the wide angle range because it goes down to 24 millimeters. Wide angle lenses are great for landscape shots as well as situations where space is limited and you want to include as much of a scene as possible. Mid-range lenses or normal lenses typically have between 50 and 85 millimeters. This range of focal lengths is great for family snapshots, portraits, and vacations. The 24 to 105 lens also falls into the mid-range category. These lenses are often referred to as walk-around lenses because they are so versatile and can be used for a variety of subjects and shooting scenarios. Telephoto lenses are lenses with over 85 millimeters and are great for getting closer to your subject. Sports and wildlife photographers use telephoto lenses extensively to zoom in on the subject. Telephoto lenses are also great for getting amazing close-up shots of flowers or other small objects. If you're photographing very small objects and want to have the ability to capture even the smallest details, you'll want to look into a dedicated close-up or micro lens. The focal lengths for dedicated close-up lenses range between about 60 millimeters and 200 millimeters. In addition to apertures and focal lengths, there is one more important feature that you should consider when you're shopping for a Canon lens, image stabilization or IS. Image stabilization will help you get sharp photos at slower shutter speeds. This feature is especially useful in low light conditions and can make the difference between a photo like this and a photo like this. Your 6D has many fully customizable settings and options. As we've discussed in chapters 1 and 4, you can customize the camera's buttons and dials, but you can also customize a wide variety of other camera functions to fit your personal preference. Let's take a look at some of these settings now. Now let's take a look at a few of the items in the setup menu that will allow you to customize several camera functions. First, we'll look at the top menu item in the first setup menu, Select Folder. With this option, you can choose the folder that you'd like the camera to use to store images on the memory card. You can also use this menu option to create new folders for images to be recorded to. This could be useful if you're shooting multiple events or locations in one day, and you'd like to have the images from each event stored in separate folders. To create a new folder, select Create Folder and select OK. Now you can choose the folder where you'd like to have the images saved on the memory card. Another useful customizable feature in the first setup menu is file numbering. With this menu item, you can choose how you'd like the image files to be numbered when the memory card is replaced or formatted. If you choose continuous, the image and movie files will be numbered continuously, regardless of whether a new memory card is inserted or if a memory card is formatted. If you choose Auto Reset, the file numbering will be reset each time that a new memory card is inserted and when a memory card is formatted. The last option, Manual Reset, will allow you to manually reset the file numbering to start again from zero. Another useful feature on the 6D is copyright information where you can enter your own copyright information to be saved in the metadata for each image that is recorded. To enter your own copyright information, navigate to the fourth setup menu and select Copyright Information. Here you can select Enter Author's Name. Press the Quick Control button to select the input area and use the Quick Control Dial and Set button to enter characters. To backspace, press the Erase button. When you're finished, press the Menu button. You can also enter information into copyright details in the same way. Now let's take a look at the camera's custom functions menu, where you can make adjustments to a variety of camera settings to suit your needs and shooting style. The custom functions menu includes three sub-menus, including exposure, autofocus, and operation others. Let's take a look at custom functions one, exposure. The first option in this menu is Exposure Level Increments. With this option, you can choose whether you'd like the camera to use one-third or one-half stops when you're adjusting the exposure settings. If you choose one-third, you will have more settings for aperture and shutter speed to choose from than if you select one-half. 
To view the next menu item for the Exposure Custom Function menu, press the right side of the multi-controller. The next menu item is ISO Speed Setting Increments, where you can choose the ISO speed increments that you'd like to be able to select. If you choose one-third stop, you will have three times as many settings to choose from than you would for one stop. Next, there is Bracketing Auto Cancel. With this option, you can choose whether you'd like the camera to continue using the exposure and white balance bracketing settings when the camera is powered off and back on. If you select on, the auto bracketing settings will be cleared when the camera is powered off. And if you select off, the auto bracketing settings will be saved when the camera is powered off and back on. The next item is bracketing sequence. With this option, you can choose the order that you'd like bracketed images to be recorded. The first option will record the first image using the standard settings. The second will be underexposed and the last will be overexposed. The next option will record the first image underexposed, the second at the standard setting, and the last will be overexposed. The last option will record the first image as overexposed, the second at the standard setting, and the last will be underexposed. The next item, Number of Bracketed Shots, will allow you to choose how many shots you'd like to use for the bracketing feature. You can choose from 3, 2, 5, or 7. The next menu item is Safety Shift. With this useful feature, you can enable the camera to adjust your exposure settings to ensure a proper exposure if the light changes quickly. The first and default option for Safety Shift is Disable. The next option is Shutter Speed Aperture which will allow the camera to make adjustments to the shutter speed and aperture settings in the camera's aperture priority and shutter priority modes. The other option, ISO speed, will allow the camera to use the ISO speed to adjust exposure in the camera's program, aperture priority, and shutter priority modes. Now let's take a look at each of the items in the second custom functions menu, autofocus. The first item is Autofocus Tracking Sensitivity. With this option, you can customize the sensitivity for the camera's AF tracking feature. If you place the cursor toward the minus side of the scale, the camera will retain focus on the subject that was initially being tracked for a longer period. If you place the cursor toward the plus side of the scale, the camera will more quickly acquire focus on new subjects. The next option in the second custom function menu is acceleration deceleration tracking. With this option you can customize the level of response you'd like the camera to have when it's tracking a subject that is quickly accelerating, decelerating, or stopping. Place the cursor at the 1 for subjects that are somewhat unpredictable in their speed and their motion, and place the cursor at the 2 for subjects that are very unpredictable. Next there is AI Servo First Image Priority. With this setting, you can set how much priority will be given to focus versus releasing the shutter when the shutter button is pressed. If you select release, the camera will allow you to take the picture even if the focus has not been achieved. If you select focus, the camera will not take the picture unless focus has been achieved. Next, there is AI Servo Second Image Priority. This setting allows you to choose whether you'd like shooting speed or focus to be the priority when the shutter button is pressed. When continuous shooting, you can select speed to have the camera continuously take pictures regardless of whether focus has been achieved. Next, there is AF Assist Beam Firing, which will allow you to enable or disable an optional speed light's AF Assist Beam in low light conditions. The next menu item is Lens Drive when AF Impossible. This allows you to choose whether you'd like the lens to keep searching or stop searching when focus cannot be achieved. Next, there is Autofocus Orientation Linked AF Point. With this menu item, you can choose whether to use the same AF point in both horizontal and vertical orientations, or you can choose to use a separate AF point for each. The next menu item is Autofocus Superimposed Display, with options for on or off. If you choose on, the selected AF points will be shown in red in the viewfinder during selection and over the focus subject when focus has been achieved. If you choose off, the AF points will show in red only when they are being selected. Next, there is the autofocus AF micro adjustment option. This menu item will allow you to fine tune the AF's point of focus. 
Note that micro adjustment is usually not necessary and using it may prevent correct focus from being achieved. Now let's take a look at the third custom functions menu, Operation Others. The first item is Dial Direction During Shutter Priority, Aperture Priority, with two options. The first and default option is Normal, which will allow you to rotate the dial to the left to decrease the exposure and rotate the dial to the right to increase the exposure. The other option, Reverse Direction, will allow you to rotate the dial to the left to increase the exposure and rotate it to the right to decrease the exposure. The next menu item is Focusing Screen. This menu item will allow you to ensure good exposure if you change the focusing screen. You'll want to adjust the setting to match the screen that you're using. The next menu item is Multifunction Lock. With this option you can select which controls you'd like to be locked to prevent accidental setting changes when the multifunction lock is set to lock. You can choose to have the main dial, the quick control dial, and the multi-controller locked. You can make your selections using the set button. When you're finished, select OK to save the changes. The next menu item is Warnings in Viewfinder. With this option, you can choose to have the camera provide a visual warning when certain settings are enabled or in effect. The warning options include when monochrome picture style is set, when white balance is corrected, when ISO expansion is used, and when spot metering is set. You can use the set button to select or deselect any of the options. And when you've made your selections, highlight OK and press set. The final menu item in the third custom functions menu is custom controls. Here you can customize the function of many of the camera's buttons and controls including the shutter button, the AF on button, the AE lock button, the depth of field preview button, the lens AF stop button, the set button, the main dial, the quick control dial, and the multi-controller. Customizing each of these buttons and controls is discussed in detail in chapter one of this guide. The Canon 6D has built-in Wi-Fi and GPS features that make it even more versatile in the way that it can capture and share images. Let's take a few minutes to discuss these features now, starting with the Wi-Fi function. The built-in Wi-Fi feature on the 6D will allow you to wirelessly share your images in a variety of ways. You can transfer images between cameras, connect to a smartphone, print images using a compatible printer, operate the camera remotely using the provided software, send images to a web service, and view the images with a media player. Note that when Wi-Fi is enabled, the movie shooting function will be disabled. Let's first discuss how to configure the camera for wireless operation. The first step is to enable the Wi-Fi function in the camera's menu system. Enter the third setup menu and select Wi-Fi. Here select Enable. The next thing we'll need to do is set a nickname for the camera to use when it's connected wirelessly to another device or local area network. Again, under the third setup menu, select Wi-Fi function. Here, press the quick control button to enter the character input area and use the multi-controller and set button to enter the nickname. To backspace, press the erase button. After you have entered the nickname, press the menu button to save and select OK. Now you can choose the wireless function you'd like to use. Let's take a moment to discuss a brief overview of each function. The first wireless function is transfer images between cameras. This feature can be used when you have a second Wi-Fi enabled camera that is compatible with the Wi-Fi feature on the 6D. The second wireless function is connect to smartphone. With this feature, you can view the images from your memory card on your smartphone. You can also use the smartphone to control the camera remotely. The next wireless function is operate camera remotely using EOS Utility. With this feature, you can use your computer with the supplied Canon software to control your camera. The next wireless function is print images with Wi-Fi printer. With this feature, you can easily print images directly from the memory card without removing the card from the camera or connecting the camera to the printer with a cable. We'll discuss this function in more detail in a moment. 
The next wireless function is send images to web service. With this feature, you can share your images online quickly without removing your memory card from the camera. The last wireless function is view images using a media player. With this feature, you'll be able to view your images on a compatible TV using a DNLA supported media player. Now let's walk through step by step how to configure the camera to use the connect to smartphone feature. Before you begin connecting your camera to your smartphone, you'll need to have the Canon EOS remote app installed on your phone. Once the app is installed, you're ready to connect the camera and the phone. Again, in the third setup menu under Wi-Fi functions, select connect to smartphone. Here you will need to select either camera access point or infrastructure mode. If you select camera access point, the camera will act as the primary device in the network you're connecting to. If you select infrastructure mode, the camera will act as a secondary device and you'll need to find it within the network. For our purposes with this guide, we will select camera access point mode and OK. Here there are the options for easy connection or manual connection. We'll select easy connection and OK. Now the camera will show an encryption key for you to use in the wireless settings on your smartphone. For iPhones, go to Settings, Wi-Fi, and select the nickname that you gave your camera. When prompted, use the encryption key on the camera as the password to connect. Once the smartphone is connected, the camera will prompt you to start the EOS app on the smartphone. When you launch the app, it will take a moment to detect the camera. Once the phone detects the camera, the app will automatically switch to the camera connection screen. Here you will have an option to pair the wireless devices. Tap the pairing button and the camera will prompt you to connect to the phone. Select OK on the camera. On the next screen, the camera will give you the option to change settings if you need to. Since we don't need to change any of the settings, we'll just select OK. Now you can use the Canon EOS remote app to either view the images on the camera or for remote shooting. When you're using the app for remote shooting, you can view a live view on the smartphone screen by tapping the live view button. You can adjust the exposure settings by tapping this button. And you can set the focus simply by tapping the area of the scene that you'd like in focus. To take a picture, tap this button. the camera's built-in GPS feature. Using the GPS will allow you to quickly sort images by location when you're post-processing, as well as record a variety of other information about the location where the photo was taken. There are a few things that you should know about the camera's GPS feature before you begin using it. First, the GPS will only work when the camera is outdoors and away from tall buildings. You should also avoid placing your hand or other object on top of the camera. Next, the GPS feature may take up to several minutes to obtain the information about the current location. Let's take a quick look at the camera's GPS function now. First, we'll need to enter the camera's second setup menu and select GPS. Here, choose Select GPS Device and select Internal GPS. Now, watch the LCD panel or quick control screen for the GPS icon. When the GPS icon is blinking, GPS signal has not been acquired. When the GPS icon is constant, the GPS signal has been acquired. You can use the camera's GPS feature to record the camera's location in the image metadata, to automatically set the time for the camera's internal clock, and even to log the route that you have traveled. You can view the GPS information in the menu system. Again, under the camera's second setup menu, select GPS. Here you select Setup. You can select GPS Information Display to view the GPS information about your current location. Another useful feature in the GPS Setup menu is GPS Logger. When enabled, you can use this feature in conjunction with the Map Utility software to view the recorded route of travel and the images that were taken during travel will be geotagged. Your Canon 6D is a sophisticated camera and will need some basic care and maintenance to keep it in good working condition. Here are some tips for storing your camera. First, 
Remove the battery and use the battery cover. Next, make sure that the storage location is cool and dry and does not get exposed to temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid storing the camera in areas with high humidity, near televisions, radios, or other equipment that produces strong electromagnetic fields. When you're using the camera regularly, you'll want to protect it from several environmental elements that could cause damage. The camera should stay dry and contact with dust or sand should be avoided. You'll also want to avoid subjecting the camera to sudden changes in temperature. If the camera is cold and is suddenly brought into a warm environment, condensation or moisture can build up on the camera's internal components. Also, leaving the lens pointed at the sun will cause damage to the camera's image sensor. Finally, make sure that the camera is turned off before you remove the battery, memory card, change lenses, or attach any accessory to the accessory shoe. You'll want to consult your owner's manual for a complete list of care techniques and cautions. Let's talk a little now about ways to properly clean the camera without causing damage. To remove dust or lint from the camera body, a blower or brush is a good tool to have on hand. With either of these tools, you can also clean the lens, viewfinder, and mirror. To further clean the camera body, you can use a soft, dry cloth. Do not use alcohol or any other harsh chemicals. If the camera has been used at a beach, you can dampen a cloth with distilled water to clean the camera body. After the blower tool has been used to remove any dust and lint, you can use a soft cloth with a small amount of lens cleaner to gently clean the lens, monitor, and viewfinder. When you're using lens cleaning fluid, be sure to apply the fluid to the cloth and not to the camera or lens directly. Your 6D can be set to automatically clean the image sensor each time the camera is turned on or off. To do this, enter the camera's fourth setup menu and select Sensor Cleaning. You can choose Auto Cleaning, Clean Now, or Clean Manually. If Auto Cleaning is enabled, the camera will automatically clean the image sensor when the camera is powered on or off. You can select Clean Now any time that you'd like to clean the image sensor automatically. And if you select Clean Manually, the camera's mirror will be locked up to enable you to manually clean the sensor. Step-by-step -step instructions are available in your camera's owner's manual. When cleaning the image sensor, great care should be taken, as damage to the image sensor can easily occur. QuickPro suggests that you contact a Canon authorized service representative for assistance in cleaning the image sensor or other internal camera components. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Canon 6D. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Watch for more QuickPro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.